Hi folks, Chris Martin here with the second edition of Diplomacy Academy. In this episode, I want to talk to you about the Austria-Italian alliance and how when they are working well together, they can illustrate the principle of tempo, an important concept for playing diplomacy well. With an understanding of tempo, you move your pieces more effectively. You make decisions that, while they may not seem optimal in the moment, will realize you much greater gains later in the game. We're in the fall of 1902 here, and let's go around and look at the state of the board. For context, in the opening moves of the game, Germany attacked Russia, taking Warsaw. Russia attacked Turkey, taking Ankara. And France and England sparred with each other, while Italy and Austria worked together. So here in the fall, a couple of key things have happened. We have Austria supporting Warsaw to hold, against what looks like it could be overwhelming odds, but Germany has decided to cover Munich and take St. Petersburg instead. Turkey takes Sev because Russia, having a 50-50 guess on Romania or Sev, decides to cover Romania and misses. So Turkey takes Ankara back from Russia. Sev becomes Turkish. But at the same time, Turkey loses Bulgaria to Austria and loses Constantinople to the Italians. So you can ignore that convoy order there. There were no fleets there. The Ionian didn't actually write that convoy. In fact, uh, Ionian, which you can't really see on this map, actually moves to the Eastern Med. Sorry about that. In the meantime, um, France convoys to Wales and England retreats, having covered London. So England now owns the home sorters, finally picks up Norway. And France picking up Spain. Okay, now a couple of things to notice here. Austria, instead of using Serbia to force Romania, supported Greece to hold. Didn't trust that Italy wasn't going to pivot on him and take Greece back. He also covers Trieste. Well, Italy takes the opportunity for the move to Tyrolia, setting up lots of possibilities for the Italian. Now, both Italy and Austria have a build here, and they did work very well together. And with the Ionian being in the Eastern Med, there's no longer a real threat to Austria in Greece. So what are they going to do? How are they going to take advantage of the situation where they appear to be the real viable alliance on the board? Let's look at winter. Italy has built a fleet in Naples, while Austria built on Vienna. We also have armies in Edinburgh and Berlin, and a new fleet in Brest. So let's take a, a look sort of holistically at what's going on in the board, as Russia has removed the army in Romania and kept the fleet in the north. If Trieste supports Vienna to Tyrolia, Austria can force Venice in the fall, almost certainly. There's very little that Italy could do about that, short of swinging Naples over to Apulia. So Italy is functionally saying to Austria here, yeah, I trust you. Austria has given himself the option of doing that. Now, is that the right call in this situation? You see, Germany with a very strong Scandinavian position, no real threats on his side of the board. Turkey is down to three. Russia is down to three. Now, I would argue, is not the time for Austria and Italy to be fighting. Instead, they should take this opportunity to get a jump on the other side of the board. And what makes the Austrian-Italian alliance so powerful is not their ability to coordinate together and attack Turkey. In fact, that is probably the worst part of their alliance because of all the tension around Greece and Bulgaria, right? Instead, it's their ability to pivot and then do two things at the same time, to attack on both sides of the board together. Now, keep in mind here that because Austria has bypassed the opportunity to take Romania last year and helped Russia, we can expect Russia to be, you know, on the Austrian alliance side, whereas Turkey is simply fighting for their life. Great. Let's go ahead and take a look at what happens here in the spring. Lots going on here. Let's focus on the south first, then we'll work our way north. In Turkey, Greece comes into the Aegean and forces Romania. Now, Eastern Med cuts Smyrna, which prevents Ankara from taking Khan, and results into a bounce in the Black Sea. 
Trieste goes to Venice. Vienna goes to Bohemia, and Naples to the Mediterranean Sea. Now, is this a stab? Is Austria just going to sit there? Or is he going to walk through and go to Piedmont while the Mediterranean Sea goes to the Gulf of Lyon? That is what the rest of the board is wondering. That's certainly what France is wondering. Does France now suddenly have a problem on his southern border when it looked like the nearest force that could possibly threaten him was over here in the Eastern Med? Or if Tyrolia went to Piedmont, it would have to be a weaker attack against Germany. Let's take a second to say that the uh, French attack on England here was really quite nicely done. English Channel supports Wales over, which can't be stopped because Irish Sea is cutting Liverpool's support. Now, the English come down to Wales and create the bounce in Liverpool, but we do have a French army in London at this point. Now, Russia gets German support to go to the North Sea, while Germany follows up into Skagerrak. Now, this is where the really interesting set of moves this season are, I think. We have Germany just taking one swing at Warsaw and Moscow. You know, if either of those move, if either of those go anywhere, he's going to get in. Functionally, he's preventing Moscow from sort of supporting Warsaw to Livonia, and if Warsaw supports Moscow to Livonia, St. Petersburg walks in. Now, Berlin to Silesia, Galicia to Ukraine. Galicia to Ukraine could be seen as getting with, along with Romania, an attack on Sev. Or it could be seen as drawing Berlin into a position where its support can be cut for the attack on Munich in the fall. We'll look at that a little bit further on. Galicia to Ukraine does a couple of useful things that will only become apparent when you look at the fall moves. So, I think that's covered the spring. Let's go and look at the fall. In fact, Venice does go to Piedmont. Trinity does go to the Gulf of Lyon. That's the tempo that you get from the alliance of Italy and Austria as they are able to work together with trust, obviously in this case, to get to places where otherwise they could not go. Now, France has made a critical error here by holding in the Mid-Atlantic Ocean. He did not want to swing into the Western Med or go into Spain if it turned out he wasn't needed there. Austria sold France on the idea that, of course, he was going to be stabbing Italy. And France bit. So that's going to be a problem for France. Down here in the south, take a look at these orders. Aegean supports Eastern Med to Smyrna. Constantinople also supports that. Now, it does get dislodged, but because Bulgaria is empty, it gets the retreat. Romania, instead of using Ukraine to take Sev from Turkey, supports Russia into Sev and bounces the German move to Moscow, while at the same time Warsaw cuts Silesia, allowing Bohemia to take Munich with Tyrolean support. That is such a key use of time and space. Instead of leaving Moscow and Warsaw to fend for themselves, Austria helps Russia back into his home center and makes sure that Moscow will be open and available for a Russian build. That is an army which Austria can probably count on being friendly to him, while it's in a forward position that he can't get to. If Ukraine takes Sev, because obviously Romania supports Ukraine to Sev would have worked here, right? Austria puts down another army back here. That army on the front lines of the fight against Germany is going to be more effective in the long run than another Austrian army, as long as he can keep it on board. Now, at the same time, we have France supporting Russia into the German Holland. And that suggests that France has not really figured out what's going on here in the bigger picture. Yes, he's successfully taken London. Yes, he's blown up the English fleet in Wales. But because he now has Austria and Italy on his back, and now that 
Austria is in Munich. He really needed Germany to be strong over here on this side of the board because the game has moved on and France missed the boat. He's wasted time here in the Atlantic Ocean that could have been better spent. If that fleet ends up in the Western Med or in Spain, very different game from here. You can see how this worked out well for both Italy and for Austria. Italy gained Smyrna and Bulgaria, even though they lost Constantinople. Austria gained Munich, so they're both going to put down a build. Uh, he also gained Romania, even though he lost Bulgaria, so plus net plus one for Austria and Italy. Turkey is down to two. He has to pick up one of these three, and that's going to mean the end. They've got plenty of force here to take him down. Germany, losing Holland and losing Munich, is really disastrous for him. He picks up Livonia and Sweden. And even though France gets the build and puts down army Marseille, he is going to be in a world of pain. We have a two-unit England, but France can't afford to spend the time it would take to go and kill him. Germany now has a real problem, as his armies aren't in bad position, but can he hold St. Petersburg now? He shouldn't be able to. And uh, even if he can get Holland back, that Russian fleet is going to be a pain in his butt. Let's walk through 1904 and just see how this plays out a little bit longer. What do you do when you're France and you realize that you've kind of missed the boat and the game has moved on? Well, you scramble as best you can to get back in it. He convoys London to Spain. That's a good, that's a good move. Marseille is lost. Munich cuts Burgundy. And Germany tries to support him in. But that support uh, is not going to work because Belgium is supporting Burgundy the whole. Now, Holland uh, cuts Kiel there, while instead of coming and taking St. Petersburg back, Russia rolls into Prussia, and Sev goes to Armenia. Turkey now completely overwhelmed. Khan gets pushed out as, as Italy supports a GNN, and he can't get into Bulgaria because Romania is there supporting him. Austria rolls his armies up, it'll bounce in Bohemia, and Italy follows into Piedmont as Marseille has to retreat to Gascony. Uh, Germany also convoys Norway home to Eddie. Now, if I'm England, I don't know that I'd take that convoy from there. Uh, we also see that England has mistakenly written the order of Liverpool to London, supported by Yorkshire. Uh, those of us who've played the game for a long time will recognize that as an illegal order. Liverpool does not border on London, so um, mistakes were made. That means that uh, Wales to London succeeds, and now, uh, without German help, England will get London back right now, either. Let's take a look then at what happens in the fall. You'll notice, oh, before we do, Ukraine has followed into Warsaw. Is this a stab of Russia? Is Russia going to lose Warsaw? Or is Austria going to continue to demonstrate that tempo is more important than dots? Let's check out the fall. The fall of 1904, and this is really the payoff of the tempo that Austria and Italy have gained together. And, and it seems to me, as we walk through this, it's pretty clear that Austria has Maybe done a little bit better out of this than Italy, but Italy hasn't done badly. They make a mistake right here that we'll get to in just a second. But starting down here again, Austria supports Russia into Ankara. Turkey is eliminated as now we bounce in Sev. And now once again, Galicia supports Warsaw to Silesia. Russia is going to end up owning Moscow, Warsaw, Sev, Ankara. And even though he loses Holland, he is going to keep four units on the table, and thus that fleet stays alive. That fleet which continues to be a thorn in the side of the Germans. Silesia is blown up. Prussia supports Munich to Berlin. So even though Munich is lost for the moment, as France and Germany finally get on board together, Ruhr uh, taking Munich, the, the Italian Austrian alliance with Russia as sort of a janissary has gained so much time and space here that 
France and Germany are going to be hard pressed to survive. Now, here is a, a mistake that I would argue is made. You have Piedmont supporting Marseille, and you have three units on Marseille. So, does Gulf of Lyon support the Austrian army in Marseille to hold, or does it support the Turinian Sea to the Western Med, which would be a lot. That couldn't be stopped. Now, this is good alliance play, making sure that Austria doesn't lose that dot there. And Austria is picking up Constantinople. Uh, if it were me, I would say, are you ever going to get Marseille back if you have, if, if France is in there and you're in the Tyrrhenian Sea? Probably? Maybe? Uh, I don't know. That's one that we could discuss later in tactics. We could play it out in the sandbox and look at it. But uh, as we go into the winter of 1904 here, let's look at what Austria and Italy have managed to accomplish in two short years. In just two years, we have a functional DMZ from Greece, Serbia, Trieste, Venice, and Rome. Neither Austria nor Italy has really anything to fear from the other at this point. Well, with a build, they might. Vienna and Budapest could have been Trieste and Vienna, and then Italy would have had something maybe to worry about, but that's a different story. Italy needs to get a build here, right? Slightly uneven, but look at this position here in Germany. Germany has moved up to Norway so that he can make sure that he can hold St. Petersburg if Russia comes for it. That's on the stalemate line. And England, once again, back down to two centers as Germany stabbed him for Norway. Missed that in the descriptions. So Germany doesn't have to pick up anything else. But he's still, he's got one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four units on the board and no place to build. So that's bad. He should have kept England around as an ally if he could have. But Austria and Italy have gained so much time and space on this side of the board. It's going to be very difficult, especially considering that Russian fleet, that northern fleet that is so key to breaking the other side of the board. It's one of the things that makes Russia key to any alliance that's attacking from the south. That has transformed the game, and now France and Germany are forced to react on their back foot to Italy and Austria. The uh, Turk is dead. These dots, you know, these dots become Austrian or Italian in whatever order they want them to be and whoever needs the builds. That is an alliance play that has driven the board. They own two home centers from the other side of the board. And there's just very little that France and Germany can do, even though the French position isn't terrible, right? He's got three fleets, but you know the minute he walks away from London, he's going to lose it. And how is he going to rotate around to hold the Mid-Atlantic Ocean, uh, as now these fleets can make the long, slow sail back? The point that I want to make here is that in two key moments, or three or four key moments, really, Austria and Italy chose to trust each other and go for tempo rather than short-term games. Gains. By walking through centers, by Trieste, Venice, Piedmont, Ukraine, Warsaw, Silesia, they were able to get to a position that was more useful than the dot that they were sitting in. Those are my thoughts on this particular illustration of how an Italian-Austrian alliance can work really well for both of them. What do you guys think? Was Italy right to trust and work with Austria here? And Austria seems to have a really good position. Should France have done something differently? What about Germany? There are lots of things that can change in the game. And obviously, diplomacy played a large part in this. It's not just about tactics. You have to line up the diplomacy to enable these moves to work. So in our next edition, I'm going to talk about that. I'm going to get some footage from the World Diplomacy Championships at Chicago Series and look at how what these players said lined up the things that they wanted to do. Until next time, I'm Chris Martin, and I'll stab you soon.